Yeah. I think that the best thing for paintball, for, for paintball to grow, would be to get back to the, the days where we experienced maybe 10 years ago, where paintball was growing at the entry level, mm. where people wanted to go play paintball with their friends, or it was a corporate outing, a company um, party, a birthday party, a bachelor party, those types of things where paintball, there, there wasn't a stigma that you know, you're shooting guns at each other and it's a violent mm, sport, right. it's a warlike sport. We want to get away from that and get the grassroots level of people to enter the sport on a rental basis, just to try. You go, you go and you try paintball with your friends for one day you've never played before. Even though that this company that I work for and represent wouldn't have any benefit at all because we do not supply any of those products for that first time yeah, yeah, player, right, right. we need those players to come in, to come in, try paintball, and experience and have a good experience, be separated from the, the guys that are shooting 40 balls per second, doing what they're doing here at the tournaments. Go out, shoot semi-automatic, play paintball, have a game of strategy mm. where you're trying to, it's a thinking game where you're trying right. to you know, help your teammates and advance on a field. You know, it's often been referred to as a chess match. Right, you need absolutely. those types of games to come back into the sport so that the players that experience that for the first time have a great experience and want to purchase their own equipment, grow in the sport, form a team, grow up and play tournaments, and help support the dealers and fields that, that, are, that are in the yeah. business of paintball. And, and, it's, and it's, I think it's part of a, a learning curve for a very new market and a new industry. You know, we, you know, we're you know, 20 years old mm. or so for, for a paintball market. That's, that's really young. We're in an, an infancy stage. Mm. When you take a step back and look at the big picture in the world and and even just looking back at at industries that are that are involved in sports and athletics and team building, you know, paintball is is, is so new mm. that just in the last couple of years, when you say paintball, people understand. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I know paintball. Yeah, yeah. Three, four years ago, only it was you know, what's paintball? I've never mm. heard of that. Yeah. They think you said pinball. Or yeah, pinball. yeah, yeah, right, right. And it, it's it's it has. I think help that we've had some mainstream television coverage and more acceptance, you know, worldwide. There are more fields and more people mm. participating in the sport to help bring that knowledge to the general consumer that you know paintball is a sport, right? And it's not just some weird, crazy renegade activity that right. some crazy, you know, war veterans do in the woods. Mm. You know, those days are gone, and, and we've all worked hard to kind of bring a, a right. sport aesthetic to what we're doing. There are always going to be those people that would not be happy with a mainstream aspect of paintball just because of what you said. Yeah, they, they like to be part of something that's unique or small or obscure. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, there is a balance. If paintball became big, there would be a community of paintball players, but the community would change. It would be a community of, of a, big, a bigger number of people that are involved at a different level. You know, a more casual level maybe. But because, I think because of the nature of, uh, of the com community being more organized and larger, the numbers are greater, the organization is greater, um, and, and there would be a community, it would just be a different type of community. You know, there are, you, know you, you gave the example of a soccer community, so soccer is a, is a mainstream sport, and there are people that are fanatical about soccer. Absolutely. And, those, those fanatical fans of, of soccer or, or participants in that sport do form a community of sorts, yeah. but they are definitely not an obscure group because they are well known and, and soccer is a sport that everybody knows and understands. Um, so it becomes a different type of community the bigger the, the community gets or the tribe gets. The more well known the sport or the, the object that these people surround themselves with gets the less obscure or unique that tribe gets, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, whether it's an, obs uh, an uh, extreme sport like motocross yeah. or surfing or snowboarding or skateboarding or paintball, you know, surfing is 25 times mm. the size of paintball they have a community. Right, right. Even though the surfing brands, the t-shirts and hats are sold in mainstream stores throughout right. the world for, to people that don't ever surf or never have surfed or never will surf, Surfing has one of the strongest cultures and communities yeah, right. that are out there. So it's a matter of the people that are still involved in that community or that culture still being totally involved in it because of the love of that community or that, that action, that activity that they're involved in.
As represented by our material, practices are by no means static. This leads us to consider a dynamic view of consumer tribes and the evolution of practices through time. As such, movement and change are continuously marking the orders and arrangements of the tribal site. According to Shatsky, the central motor of constant becoming that sweeps the social life is one of agency, both human and non-human. The tribal practice of paintball has evolved through such sweeps as technological development of the equipment, sport aesthetics and appeal to audiences. Change has also been substantially driven by companies who are continuously introducing new materials to enable the evolution of the sport. Such commercial activity, which has led to professionalization, has also been a driver of the shaping practice. In addition, external effects have their influence. For instance, the economic crisis has its reflection on how tribal companies operate and collaborate. In line with Shatsky, we thus advocate for a more practice-based perspective for the site of the marketplace cultures. The site is not a location, but a dynamically evolving practice to which participants engage in. The tribe becomes not bound in a location, but is inherently translocal. Our research highlights three outcomes relevant for future studies. First, it allows us to move beyond the meaning-making processes and narratives to include doings, sayings, understandings, skills, know-how, objects and their handling, and routinized bodily movements. In this way, the practices underlie the subject and objects, but more importantly illuminate the conditions and settings for intelligible action. Secondly, it allows for the investigation of the change and dynamics which have become under-researched in existing literature. Thirdly, it frees us from the specific local field site. As represented by our material, the practices themselves are the ultimate site of activities. Kyllä on tosi. Mä tärisen vaan tässä. Just do it!